go any further uh, since I got laid on the start. <sighs> Triggered action. The and I'm looking at this from a computer programmer's perspective. What we're looking, what we're doing here is setting up an action, which is uh, once red team is under attack at Beatty Airport from our A10s, that's going to trigger and a MiG-21 that's going to take off from Goom Lake Air Force Base, fly directly to Beatty Airport and engage uh, uh, any enemies in the sky. Now, right. the first thing we need to do is put down a MiG-21 at um, Goom Lake. We do that as normal. I already know how to do that. And from what I'm hearing, the triggers is the third tab on the bottom section where it says triggered actions. Yeah, you have route, you have payload, you have triggered actions, and then you have summary. Triggered okay. actions is the one that we want. Now, we've already set the aircraft to be uncontrolled, so we need to give it the command to start that we're going to use in the trigger. So you go to add Hang on. at the bottom of that little window. Triggered action and then summary. Actually, I don't need to write this down. I'm recording it. All right. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So go to add. Uh-huh. And that'll open up a little side window. Okay. You're going to go down to where it says perform command. And under action, hang on a the second. Very bottom for, one, it start. For for type, perform command, action, mm -hmm. start. It's the very bottom one. All right. So what am I telling it to do here? That is the actual command to put a pilot in there and take off. But it won't automatically do that. That's where the trigger comes in. So oh. we're at least making it so that this thing can be started. All right. Okay. So all right. So damn. So you have to put a trigger in just to put a guy in the seat. Right. Damn. Otherwise, this airplane will just sit there for no matter what throughout the entire mission. That's good to know. Okay. So I can name the trigger? Uh, you don't necessarily have to. Just leave it as start. That's fine because you, it'll show up in that little window there. You'll see number one and then it says start. Right. So we're going to create the trigger in a minute. The first thing that we want to do is we want to finish setting up the aircraft itself. Oh, okay. So you can actually go back to the route uh -huh. page or the route tab. Uh -huh. And then and put his route. Yeah, we'll create his waypoint. So uh, click on add underneath where it says the start time. Okay. So now we're putting another trigger. Well, now we're just putting his actual route. So you can just make one waypoint and make that waypoint be over by Beatty Airport, just somewhere over there. All right. <clears throat> Are we and on the third? Of course, give it an altitude. Are we still on the third tab, or the, we need to go back to the no, first we're tab? Back on, we're back on the first tab. Okay, route. so let me go ahead and delete the second thing I just created. All right, so the first yeah. one is a tab uh, for the waypoint. So now what I need to do is uh, hit uh, add. Yep, and then just make a waypoint close to Beatty Airport. I have it um, right within the threat circle of where you've got those targets sitting. Wait, hang on so, a second here. I'm Okay, so... I still have it says a uh, type command perform action no action. What's you say? Oh, that wait, wait, hang on a second here. Why is this coming up? Why is what coming up? This is a uh, oh shoot. I, I'm sorry. It, it's editing that second. Hang on. When no you action. switch it to the route tab, it should disappear. That right. window on the side should disappear. Because you want to actually right. create the waypoint where this guy is going to go to once. He's oh, up. right. Okay, so I need to hit add in the waypoint section, not the triggered right. action, the, way, the advanced waypoint no. actions. Okay, so hit add. Yeah, so you're adding a waypoint. Now, Put your waypoint close to Beatty Airport. It doesn't matter where because once they get close enough, they're going to attack anyway. By default, when you create an aircraft, by default, the, there is already a waypoint that you've created. That is where the aircraft is, correct? Yeah, that's the starting point. That's SP. waypoint zero. Okay. Right. All right. right. So let's move over to Beatty Airport, and I'm going to click there. Okay? That's the first waypoint. That's really the only waypoint you need, because I'm assuming you probably want to shoot him down at some point. Well, I mean, you know, to make it interesting, I mean, if, if, if we leave uh, his skill setting to be random, he could come in and kick ass. So, mm -hmm. so, so, so we've essentially told him... We've told the computer the enemy is going to come here and engage. Right. Now, right. do we need to give the enemy any more instructions? 
for instance, well, if you, we need to set his altitude and speed. How fast do you want him to get there once right. he gets the order to take off? Right. Well, we can do that in the in the waypoint. I understand that part. Mm -hmm. But uh, once he gets to this waypoint, how can we tell the computer? How do we tell uh, the enemy to engage, or does it know to do it automatically? It's the default behavior to engage enemy any air to air <sighs> enemy targets. Okay, so by default, once it gets into that area, yeah, it'll start shooting at you. So yeah. he he will know to turn on his radar and all of that nonsense. Right. If he's got missiles on it, which uh, actually we didn't even check the payload on this it. Stores. Guys. Okay, yeah, let's do that. So all, all right, I have to do is so go to see. payload. All right. Okay. It looks like he can hold a couple of missiles, fuel tanks. Um, I don't know what an SPS 141 slash 100 is, but I'm assuming that's something to do with air to air. Um, let me see. Okay, you know what? As far as loadouts go, just go with anything that it says default. Like there's patrol long range, patrol medium range. Patrol, patrol medium short range. range. Okay. Okay, and we can set this oh, yeah, fuel just, here. Okay. Just click one just for the sake of clicking one, basically. Okay. Go back to the waypoint. And... No, okay now, so, so but we haven't set the trigger. We have not set the trigger yet because the trigger... Not yet. That's going to be the next thing. But we have to make sure that he's set up to go so that he knows what he's going to be doing. We just oh. need to give it the trigger now to do so it. In, so in other words, the task needs to be defined before the trigger. Right. Okay. But without the trigger, none of this happens. He sits there at the airport forever. Exactly. Okay. But yeah, you always want to set up what you want your guy to do and then figure out how he's going to get the order to do it, which, um, like I said, we really only need the one waypoint if you're planning on shooting him down. If you think that he's going to succeed, chances are what will happen, the default behavior is he'll just keep flying around until he starts getting low on gas and then he'll head back to Groom Lake Air Force Base because that's the only Air Force Base in the area. That's already flagged as a red base, so he's going to consider that naturally his home base. All right, I tell you what, we know he's going to engage. Uh, um, uh, no, that's more triggers we don't need to program. Okay, yeah, don't make it too complicated. Yeah, don't make it too complicated. If you exactly. want, we can now work on the trigger. I mean, I know you haven't put the altitude or the speed for this guy in there, I, but you know you can always do that at any time. I know how to do that. Yeah, let's work on the trigger. Okay. So, for the actual trigger, we'll open up the triggers window from the left-hand side, set rules for trigger. So, we're still clicking on the red team aircraft. So, then we're going to go to the third tab, triggered actions. We don't have to, no, you don't have to click on the aircraft. Go to the left side of the screen. Okay. Where it says file, MIS, right. object, uh -huh. you know, all those icons. Yes. And go third one down in MIS, set uh -huh. rules for trigger. Oh, Okay. That's, That's different. That's how we do it. Oh, okay. So you just go ahead. These and are the global triggers for the mission. Got it. Global not triggers. Specific to any aircraft. Got it. All okay. right. So on the first column, the leftmost column, mm -hmm. click new. New. Give it a name. So um, easy name. Activate MIG. We'll just call this time activated trigger. Time trigger. Whatever you want to call it. It okay. really doesn't matter. It's basically for your benefits so you have an idea just looking at a glance which trigger does what okay all right so once we've given it a name um go to the middle column and click new uh huh now what do you want to be the time frame like do you have an idea of when you're going to get to the target area so that that guy can actually fly it doesn't matter hold on a second i'll be right back okay Actually, it does matter because if it's going to take you a half an hour to fly your warthogs over to Beatty Airport and this guy has a timer set for like 15 minutes, he's going to take off and the first thing he's going to do, he's going to track you guys down and attack. <laughs> oh, really? Is that well, how it timing works? Is, timing is everything. you got to figure out whether or not you want him to get the call because 
you guys are over the target, or do you want him to do a preemptive strike and try to knock you out of the sky before you even reach the target? No, I, f for this trigger, because remember, we're doing a set of triggers. For this one, I just want the trigger to go at a certain system clock time. Okay, so in the middle one, mm -hmm. when after you click New, mm -hmm. the first thing it defaults to is all of Coalition in Zone. We are going to change that. So there's a little upside-down triangle. You click on that, and the, the drop-down menu will come down. You are going to go down. It's all alphabetically uh, situated. So go to where it says Time okay. More. Hang on a second here. What am I clicking on now? Right now, once you click New, uh -huh. it should by default say All of Coalition in Zone. That's the default thing that it pops up. Right. Where it says All of Coalition in Zone, you're going to click on the, the thing. The type. The gray bar. Right, for type. Right, okay. And you're going to scroll down mm -hmm. to where it says time more. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> this I is know. where you got to do math now. All right. How much time do you want to give it from the time that the mission starts from the moment uh, you're actually I see what you're on the thing? Got it. Okay. All right. So let's just go ahead. Let's say the mission is programmed to start at 1,500 hours. So we want. 90 minutes after mission start. 90 minutes? Yes. Hour and a half. That's a lot of time. You will definitely be on the way home by the time you get there. It, 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 it doesn't matter. I mean, what, what I'm trying to learn here is how to program the trigger for the time. I mean, right. how, much, how much... I mean, I'm not actually going to save this as an enhancement to this mission. I just, I'm just okay. going through this gotcha. exercise to learn. You know what I'm saying? All right. So then here's what we got to do. We got to figure out how many seconds in 90 minutes. So well, 90. That's easy. 60 times 60 is 120. Six. I come up with uh, 5,400. Right. So just so type where in 5,400. So seconds, uh -huh. you got to type in 5,400. Got it. Okay. And then what? Oh, yeah. And now on the third column, mm -hmm. what do you want to happen? Click New. Okay. Engage and targets. It already, it already says AI task push. But you can, you can pro drop down and do all, all sorts of shit. Uh, when okay. you hit that drop down there's only one triggered action that we already set up and that is MIG start but we can also trigger other things right yeah okay just click on new you can have you can have multiple things happen at the same time but the key thing that you want to happen with this particular trigger is you want that MIG to start up and head out and so when you go AI task push and then right below it AI action, when you click on that box for AI action, the only thing that we've already preset for that particular aircraft was to have it start up. Oh, See okay. What I'm so AI task push, that's gonna mm -hmm. default. That's gonna default to uh, start up, take off, fly the route that you've programmed in, and engage the enemy. Right. Which, honestly, the only thing we are telling the trigger system to do with this particular trigger is simply put a pilot in the plane and start it up. The pilot already has everything set up. Because remember, we just took the time to give it a waypoint. Right. Its default behavior is already going to be to attack whatever's in the sky that's an enemy. Right. We are just giving it the command to put the pilot in there so it can actually start. Okay, so, task, so do we need something else in actions? No. That's it. Just AI task push, and then make sure the AI action is selected to MIG start. AI action. Oh! Red team one start. Right. I don't know what you named your aircraft. Red I named, team one I just aircraft. named it MIG, uh -huh. so it'll show you the name of the aircraft or uh -huh. the name of the aircraft group. Uh -huh. Then whatever the command is that you already set in that triggered action for the aircraft itself. Got it. Okay. The only thing that we set was start. But you can use that for like a multitude of different things. You could set up triggered actions for having them go into a certain formation. You could set right. up triggered actions for, you know, whether or not you want them to abort the mission if something happens. Got it. There's Got it. Okay. many, many different options. But that's it. That's all we need for that trigger. So as we have it right now, mm -hmm. when this thing gets past 90 minutes from the time that you click OK or fly or whatever. It's going to start up and take off. It's going to start up the MiG. The MiG will fly off. The MiG right. will attack anything in the sky that's an enemy. And then, you know, once it's starting to get Got low it. on gas, it'll head back to its base. 
All right, let's go ahead and delete this. So just hit delete. Yep. And yeah, do everything. it from the left column. Right. Uh, from the left column. Right, that'll delete the entire trigger. Got it. Okay. All right, that was the first one. All right, so that one was easy enough. Now the next one is when your team is under attack. So the first, so 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 this new trigger, uh, this this new trigger that's going to trigger the same action that we've defined before. That is, the MiG twenty one takes off and flies to Beatty Airport. The moment Beatty Airport is attacked from the first bomb that gets dropped, that's going to trigger the MiG to take off. How do we do that? Okay, there's a couple of ways that we can do that. You could okay. either have it register a bomb within a certain zone, which would require us creating a zone for it to look for a bomb, or you could have it set up uh, where if any of your targets get damaged or killed, uh -huh. that it will go ahead and do that. Hold on a second, I'm getting a call here. Okay. Hello? Yes. Sorry about that. I'm back. <laughs> Who's your mom talking to? I ordered Chinese, so I had to, like, get it. Uh, your mom's on the phone. Okay. Still there? Yeah, I'm still here. You can hear me? Hello? Hello? I love it. Hang on, Drew. Hello? 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 Am I not hearing you? I see myself transmitting, but I can't hear you, so I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> uh, oh shit, my stuff works. I don't know what the hell the problem is. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Okay, now I can hear you. I don't know what happened there. Okay, that was Discord. All right. Okay. All right, so All right. it sounds to me that it'd be easier or more logical to define if any of the enemy units gets damaged, that would trigger a response. Okay. Now, the response you're looking for, is that starting up the MiG so that the MiG can fly out and intercept? The response is the MiG starts up, takes off, and flies to be the airport. Okay. So we're using basically the same parameters, which means we really didn't have to delete what we just deleted. The only thing that's going to change are the conditions that need to be met for that para for that um, action to take place. Okay. All right. Let we'll me do it again for sake of argument from scratch. Let me let me see here. Let me see, bear with, see, see. Let me see if I can. Let me see how far I can get before. Uh, before I need your help. So I click on new in the leftmost mm -hmm. column and I'm going to call this um, uh, under attack trigger. Okay. And remember that name is just for your benefit. It I understand. serves no other purpose. All right. And in and middle then, column, what are the conditions? In the conditions, I'm going to hit new and I'm mm -hmm. going to put um, uh, hang on, it's gonna it's gonna be one of these things, and I have absolutely no idea which one it is. Unit, uh, I, okay, I give up for time's sake. Which one is it? All right, the easiest way to do it is to use the one that says "group alive less than." Group alive less than, okay? Does that mean? Let's face it. If you hit one of these tanks, it's got to be less than perfect. It's gonna blow them up. It's not gonna just damage them. They're gonna blow up. So. What you can do is group alive less than, and uh -huh. then it's going to ask you which group you want to use. So find your tank group, which I believe I renamed that target tanks, and now you understand why I renamed things. Oh. 
makes it easier to find in lists like this. So make sure target you have target tanks. Tanks. Okay, I see it. Oh, now, below that, the percentage. What percentage do you want to trigger this? Well, how many tanks do we have? We have what? Four tanks. Uh huh. So let's say if the group alive is less than seventy-six percent. So if one tank gets destroyed. If one tank gets destroyed, yeah, that should trigger the event. Hmm. So always opt for like one percentage point higher than what you're looking for. Well, so in theory, in, in, in theory, the moment, the moment, uh, uh, ah, never mind. 76%, got it. <laughs> yeah, that's the easiest way to do it. Otherwise, it just gets a little complicated trying to figure out what 75% is of right. however many you got. Okay. All right. Um, and then for the actions, we just do the same exact thing that we did before. New AI task push on red team start one. There you go. And that's it. So the same exact result. It's just a different condition to get to that result. Okay. In this case, instead of a time, we're just changing it to make it that, you know, as soon as we get attacked, come save us. Right. And now, I see what you're saying. So, and now the next, the, the next one is if a unit is destroyed, but it yeah, appears that ties into the same thing. Now, here's just for sake of argument, since we did have two options that we could have used, let's explore the the other option that we didn't discuss. Because honestly, what we just did here answered your point number three. Right, it did. So let's go back to number two, and I'll show you the other way to do it. We really don't have to change too much. We can leave this example that we've got there. The only thing we're going to change is condition. Okay. So where we have group alive less than, uh -huh. click on that drop down, and instead, we want to use something like bomb in zone. Yeah, that's what you're saying. Now, as I stated, we have to set up a zone, which right. you can do that from the left-hand side uh -huh. column. Under object, where you have the plane, the helicopter, the tank, all of that. Yeah. About halfway down is create trigger zone. So if you click on that, you can right. create a zone where you want it to look for a bomb. Uh, just... Just, uh... Basically, all you have to do is just left-click on the map where you want to have that trigger zone created. It, by default, creates a 3,000-meter radius. Okay. And, uh, yeah, and you, can, you can you can shrink the radius. Right. Okay. You can shrink the radius. You can change the color that it appears on the map. You can change the name of it. It doesn't have oh. to be new trigger zone. Oh, or okay. you could make it hidden so that when somebody's playing your mission, they can't yeah. tell where exactly... It's gonna pick up. This is actually the much, this actually makes more sense. Okay. Right. All right. So after so, I've created the zone, hit, hit close close the trigger zone. Yeah. Just go back to. You can just click on where it says set triggers, the same place that we were in before. Set rules for trigger. Got it. Okay. Right. Okay. So we get back to our triggered event, and like I said, for the center one, the conditions, we're gonna change that from what we had it but we're going to call it bomb in zone. Okay, now, hang on a second, Drew. I did not delete the last trigger we created. What happened to it? Um, has it changed? No, I, I'm in triggers, and th the only trigger we're working on is the new trigger zone. The one that we defined mm -hmm. before. Right. Oh, we changed that. Uh, okay, we changed right. it. We did. We changed it to, to a dead end zone. Okay, cool. So on the right. conditions. But, however, we didn't have... A trigger zone created just yet. I actually should have had you create the trigger zone before we did that. But now that we do have one, you'll uh -huh. see when you put it to bomb in zone, uh -huh. at the very bottom of that column, the zone is automatically set to the only zone that we have. Right. New trigger zone. But now the change of type of bomb, we know that we're loaded with Mark 82. So where it says type bomb, and right now it should say KMGU-2, and then a whole bunch of other numbers. Oh, crap. Where are you? Where are you reading from? Yes. In that middle column, yeah. under bomb in zone, the next thing under bomb in zone says type bomb. Okay, hang on a second here. Hi, basically it's type of bomb. Uh, all right, so in the left column, once on our attack, in the middle column, trigger should be bomb in zone. We're, right. We set the zone. And the type yeah, of bomb... Yeah, the zone's already set. Right, and then the type of bomb... When you click on the name that's in that box, uh -huh. you'll see a drop-down menu. Just look for Mark 82... 
because I'm assuming that's the kind of bomb you want to drop. Right. That's what you got loaded on the um, on the aircraft right now. So this trigger will only trigger if a Mark 82 drops in there. <laughs> right. Which is why we made that zone pretty big, because we don't know where you're going to come in. You don't know where you're going to ingress from. Well, not only that, but you don't know what ordinance you're going to drop. It can be. It could be a Maverick. So you'd have to set up it an... Usually, it usually doesn't pick up the Mavericks. It'll pick up actual bombs, but that's a limitation with it, is I don't recall that it will actually pick up a Maverick. It'll <sighs> pick up any of the bombs that you can actually drop, and since you do have bombs loaded, you know, right. I would assume that you're planning on dropping bombs on the tanks at some point in time. So the only ones that you have that matches is the Mark 82s. All right. So when this drop down is going to have both U.S. and Russian uh, weapons? Yeah, it's it's always going to have everything that is a droppable bomb. Okay. All right. Doesn't matter what country it's from, it'll all show up in that list. So you just have to know what you have equipped on that aircraft, what you want the trigger to look for. So when it sees a Mark 82 fall off your aircraft, as long as it's within that trigger zone, it's going to tell the MiG to start. Got it. Okay. It's not going to wait until it actually blows something up. It's just looking, hey, there's a bomb. Right. Got it, got it. Got That's it, got the it, other way it. to do it. That's what you would do when your team is under attack. You just right. set up a zone. Now, I'm going to blow your mind even further. There's another way that we could do this with this same exact zone that we have. Okay. Instead of doing bomb in zone, you can change bomb in zone to... Fly in zone? Part of group in zone or unit in zone if you want it to just track your aircraft. Unit inside zone or unit yep. in, inside. Yep. Inside. Unit inside zone. So in other words, if. Uh, if uh, it's going to look for your aircraft. Any bad guy flies in there, that triggers it. Okay. That's a unit good one. Is specific, unit is specific to one plane so if you specifically wanted to track the player's aircraft and you have the player's aircraft named a certain thing or anything for that got matter it, got it got it'll it. look for it the other way you can do that you can wait until both of your aircraft are in the zone mm -hmm. which would be group inside zone group inside zone yeah all of group inside zone or you could use part of group i'll tell you the easiest way to do it put part of group in zone and and that way, that way, anybody from the opposing team get in that zone that triggers right. it. Right. So okay. whether it's you, whether it's your wingman, as long as they're in that zone, it's going to trigger it. So you, that That's essentially the simulates way to do it. That simulates, for the most part, uh, uh, invading the enemy radar. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's kind of like an early warning system. Early warning okay, system. We yes. just got, we just got the word. There's aircraft around our area, and then of course. In concert with that, you could make the trigger zone much larger. Or smaller. So, Or smaller, yeah. Right. But as soon as any one of those aircraft go through there, uh -huh. that MIG will start. Got it. That, this is giving me ideas for some other missions I have in mind that I'm, I haven't programmed out yet. Of the three methods that we just did, this is the easiest one to do. Just set up a trigger zone, make it as big as you want it to be, uh -huh. your early warning sensor area. Uh-huh. Tell it part of group and zone, set that to the group, the player group or whatever it is, uh -huh. and just work from there. Got like it. Like make your trigger based off of that. Makes sense. Makes perfect That's sense. The easiest, easiest way to do it. Instead of messing with bomb in zone or the other way that we were doing it where if one target gets destroyed. Because I mean, seriously, is the enemy going to wait until one of their tanks is gone before they decide to send up? you know, an intercept. No, they're going to try and knock you out of the sky before you can even get there. Right. If they were worth their salt. But yeah, that's how we would do that. All right. Victory. Mission accomplished. How, how do we do that one? Okay. Think about what you want the player to accomplish in order for a mission accomplished. Do you just want to register the destruction of the tanks? Do you want to make sure that the tanks are destroyed, the AAA is destroyed, the aircraft are destroyed, all of that? Or do you want to make sure the entire Red Coalition has been wiped out, including the aircraft? Um, okay. Um, well, it depends on the mission. Uh, in, in, in our case, let's say... Um, the tanks are destroyed. 
Okay, so we only want to have the tanks destroyed. All right, let's go ahead and delete that trigger that we just created. So that's the reason left why column, I click name delete. stuff. Got it. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. All right, so we'll make a brand new trigger, and it'll come up trigger with a whole bunch of numbers. So just rename it Mission victory accomplished. Conditions or, okay. Yeah, whatever you want to call it. I always use victory conditions. Okay, yeah. In the middle column, mm -hmm. yes. click new. Uh-huh. And we are going to scroll down to group dead. Seems pretty straightforward, right? Group dead, yeah. And where it asks you what group, Just target give tanks. tanks. <laughs> yeah. And then actions, actions, new. This is where it gets a little bit different. You see where it says AI task push. Yeah. We don't want that this time. What we want is a message to the coalition. New. Uh, scroll down. And then message. Message to coalition. Uh, hang on, I'm not finding it. Hang on. Message to coalition. Remember, it's alphabetized. Yeah. Uh huh. Coalition blue. Oh, we. Coalition blue. That's uh -huh. our team. Where it says text, pretty self-explanatory. Write what you want it to say. So you mission accomplished. Won. Okay. For how long? And there. Okay. For how long? Right. Got 10 it. seconds, 30 seconds, 60 seconds. Clear view, I never use. It's supposed to make the whole thing transparent. Because you know how normally there's a, a tinted black background? Yes. Behind the writing? Uh -huh. Clear view supposedly removes that, but I don't even know if it works, to be honest uh -huh. with you. So okay. I never click it. That's easy enough. Okay. Yeah. But that, that's how you would do your victory condition. Now, let's say you wanted to complicate matters and make sure every single thing is dead. In yeah. that middle column, yeah. all you have to do is press new again. Uh huh. Go back down to group dead. So you'll basically have two group dead things. Uh huh. And you'll see that we have target triple A. So let's select target triple A. You don't have to change anything in either the left or the right side. You just keep adding stuff to the middle. So Got it. Got it. And the that, way it's now changed, in order for that victory message to happen, you have to take out all the tanks and all uh, the AAA. Right. doesn't matter if you take out the planes. doesn't matter if you take out the infantry fighting vehicles. Right. As long as the AAA are done, you win. Okay. Makes perfect sense. Uh, this is this is actually kind of easy. You're just building, a, you're yeah. just building an if-then. You're building a nested yeah, if-then statement. That's exactly what it is. Correct. That is exactly the way to think about it. The only thing is we have a graphical user, user interface, interface that we can use it. How come you didn't become a computer programmer? Sounds like you'd have been a good one. Uh, honestly, it bores me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got more important things to do. When it comes to certain things like, you know, Making missions, video games, or in the case of when I was doing Second Life, uh, scripting helicopters that I would then turn around and sell to people in Second Life. Yeah. You know, there has to be a means to an end. Like, why am I doing this? I can't just do programming for the sake of programming. I got to have a, a reason as to why I'm doing it. No, you're doing... What I'm saying is you do... From my perspective, you're doing it for a living to make money and accumulate wealth. I know people in their mid-20s making 150 a year doing java.net development i'm sorry doing .net development yeah i'm sure it would be great except are they really going to enjoy what they're doing and that's my big thing that's why i do the whole youtube thing in the first place yeah i got a day job where i work with computers i don't have to do the programming aspect of it that would probably bore me to tears but doing something like this kind of programming i'm working for myself it's going to ultimately help out my youtube your channel project. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> And that's Ooh. how I am. I know it's weird, but that's why I have never done it as a professional type thing. If I'm working for myself, yeah, that's my motivation right there. Uh, I'm not going to do that for a corporation. Hang on a second here. I uploaded my um, my thing. Let me see if, it, if it, it's on the page. I posted the landing. Mm -hmm. Yep, there it is. Vulture Squadron Mission Complete. RTB. <laughs> vulture Squadron. <laughs> well, the first thing I thought about Vulture, Turkey Vulture, John Crow, Jamaican. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. Vulture Love Squadron. It. All right. So, all right. Let's 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 go ahead and clear this out. And since we have a, a, an hour, uh, not an hour, about 20 minutes left, I, I didn't want to take up too much of your time. Only about an hour. That's fine. My Chinese off. food's waiting. File, exit, no... What I wanted to do was um, mission editor. Let's talk about creating. I know how to create uh, uh, units of aircraft, put them in the air, and all that stuff. Let's talk about ground units. So okay. um, let's talk about uh, armor. 
light mm -hmm. armor, and personnel. So, and I'm assuming what works for one works for all. So let's say you want a convoy of two vehicles. You want a convoy of three vehicles, okay? okay. Uh, the, the first and the last vehicle are security vehicles protecting the middle vehicle, which is carrying uh, components for a metagenic weapon, which is which has been outlawed across, you know, uh, the globe and it's being right. developed illegally. And it's our job to fly this night mission, incur, you know, flying an incursion into enemy zone, uh, identify the uh, this convoy of three vehicles, take out the middle one mm -hmm. that has this banned stuff and haul ass before uh, their, their, uh, their MiG whatever comes after us. All right. So in this case... Okay. So in this case, you've already taught me everything I need to do in the air. Now, on the ground, mm -hmm. I'm thinking all I need to do is create a group of uh, ground units, whatever, you know. The right, first, three units. The first, and, the first and last can be, uh, I don't know, something armored, whether it's, right. uh, you know, whatever. Yeah, and something the that's got weapons that's going to shoot back. Basically. Exactly. Because we're not going to mess with the... Um, default behavior of it we're not going to tell it weapons hold we want them to defend this thing with their lives right and the middle one will be like a humvee or just just a regular and, re regular vehicle yeah you could probably use like a supply truck um both both uh factions the blue and the red have different supply trucks i'll tell you which ones are which right now what you now obviously what you would do is create that unit okay mm -hmm. yeah create and then it where you want it to start r right and then you can actually put the waypoints on the road in the map. Yeah, absolutely. All right. If you're ready to do that. Yeah, let's um, go ahead and do that. You see where all the roads are on the map, right? Uh-huh. So pick a road, any road, wherever you want this thing to start. Like, I'm doing mine uh, just to the east of Tonopah Test Range. There's that road just to the east of there. Okay. Hang so on a second we'll here. go to Object... Add modify ground vehicle group. Hang on a second. Tonapa Airport. You mean that road that goes by right there? Yeah. Uh, next to the, just a little bit north of the Tonapa VOR station. Right. Yeah. You want to look for those red or I don't know. I guess they're orange roads. Um, those are right. Those are legit roads in the game that uh, fake vehicles will be driving through. Got and it. Your AI can Got also it. drive on. Okay. So, so then I click on object. So I click on the aircraft. No, that's an aircraft no, group. You want you want the, the tank, ground vehicle group. Yeah, which is a tank. Okay, click on that. Now it really doesn't matter what you put down. You just want to put one down. You can always change it afterwards. So I don't know. Pick a spot near the road. Hang on, I gotta make it Russian. It. Yeah, uh, that, that you will want to do. You want to make sure it's Russian. Don't I want to give it a category? No, not really, because you can change all of that after you place it. All right. So just so, click anywhere on the map that okay. you want to put it. All right. And I, then we'll work on the rest of it. Okay. All right. Well, actually, okay, yeah. So I I I put him on on the map. Actually, I put him on the road. But in reality, he's gonna That's start right. off from somewhere first. Right. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that he's on the road so you'll notice in the bottom half of that where it says waypoint name type on the type it says off road just change that to on road <sighs> got it and it'll automatically drag your little guy to the nearest road snap him to the road okay all right so now that we have him set we need to figure out what he is and then we need to add his two buddies behind him okay so let's see. The first one by default is set to an APC, BTR 80. Um, we could leave it as that because that's an armored car, basically. So it's got weapons on top. Or you can pick anything else from the list that yeah. you know will be able to defend itself. You want to know what's funny? I'm not familiar with any of these Russian weapons, but I took your advice and I looked in the encyclopedia. I tried to find these things in the encyclopedia, they weren't there. I yeah, there, there. It's just not listed the same way that it's listed in this uh, lineup here. Yeah, figures. I can tell you the ones that will definitely defend themselves from aircraft are the default BTR-80, mm -hmm. also the BRDM, mm -hmm. and any of the BMPs. All of those have guns on the top, uh -huh. and I think in the case of the BMP, they even have heat-seeking missiles on top, like one heat-seeking missile on top of the uh, barrel of the gun. 
So you can use any of those, and that that's the reason why the range got big. That's the reason why the range right. got bigger. Okay. All right. All right. So we have that one. Okay. Uh, so now let's give him a buddy. So we'll go unit one of one. We'll make that unit one of two. Okay. Hang on a second. Let me think. <sighs> Shouldn't we give him a heading? No, because he's on the road. Oh. He can only go one way. Got it. Okay. All right. Well, two ways, either way on the road. But we're going to define which way he's going to go after we give him his buddies. Okay. So, all right. So we got two. Okay. So now, if you move over to unit two of two, you'll notice that it basically duplicated that first, first vehicle as your second vehicle. Right. We need to change this guy. So let's go where it says category armor. Let's uh -huh. make that unarmed. Okay. And when you go down to unit name, um, go with transport Ural 375. That's Trans basically a supply truck. Transport U A R U R L 375. Okay, cool. Right. That's a supply truck. That's all that is. Okay. So we already have him set. Now let's give his uh, his other escort. So we'll go back to unit two of two and make that unit two of three. Wait a second here. Wouldn't I want to click on unit one and create another no. guy? Uh, well, you can if you want to. Yeah, you can do that. And it'll copy that first guy to the third guy. If you do it from unit two, it's going to make another supply truck. No, well, in theory, the way we'd want to do this, we'd want to use unit. Uh, we'd want to use unit uh, one, because. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think I'm creating waypoints here. What am I doing? Yeah, you don't want to click anything on the map. You just want to add units. Hang on. Do, 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 do. So, All how right. many units do you have created now? I have two of two. Okay. Put it back to one of two, like just hit that little tiny left arrow there. Okay, so this is what I was doing the last time I was creating this mission and I kept fucking everything up. Mm -hmm. When you put, so once it says when you put stuff down and you start mm -hmm. clicking again, it's going to create a new group that wasn't there before. You know what I'm saying? Mm, it shouldn't. It should. If you start clicking on empty spots, it's not going to create anything. Okay, hang on a second here. But you want to make sure you have this group selected. So as long as you've got that whole thing in the right-hand side there, just make sure it says unit one of two. And then where it says of two, just change that to three. So it'll duplicate that first unit as your third unit. Okay, so here's my question. I just clicked on the tank. I, it brought up the interface, but everything is grayed out. Okay, so what do I need to click on to get access to the vehicle group again? What do you mean everything is grayed out? How should I put this? Um, all right. New vehicle group. Okay. We just, uh, uh, actually, new vehicle group 01. It's not selecting. Right, right now, it's not looking at the group we just created. If I click, if I left click anywhere in the map, it's going to create a new vehicle group. You see what I'm saying? Did you, did I, you click on the left side icons at all? add modify ground vehicle group because the only way all of that stuff would be grayed out is if you're going to put in a whole new group oh 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 okay i got it i got you it i got it that. okay i got it all right so let me go ahead you and delete. Need to close out that side window there where it's all grayed out just hit the little x at the top Hang on, let me go ahead and... And you need to physically click on a group that you just created. And I'm, hang on, I'm, I'm going to delete these waypoints I accidentally created by clicking. All right, so all right, so to create the other one, all I have to do is click on the first one, new vehicle right. group, and just click, just click another one of three. And there I right. have two armored bad boys in the right. middle. One in the front, one in the back, and then a... The middle transport one. Got truck it. in the middle. Got it. Yeah. Right. That's how you do it. Now, we still need to create a waypoint for this guy. So I don't know how many waypoints you want to place, but since they, they're going to be on the road, basically pick another point way down the road where you want them to end. Oh, and, and they'll follow the road. It'll automatically follow the road. Oh, my God. That is so easy. Okay. So, all right. So that road goes all the way west into Tanopa Valley mm -hmm. View. 
So um, I'll have to just click on where I want it to end. Yeah. Oh. I mean, you could add you could add multiple waypoints if you want them to go like at certain speeds through right. the city or something like that. But the way that everything is set right now, default, <laughs> they're going to be driving at 11 knots, which is what, 15 miles per hour or 10 miles per hour or something like that. forever. Okay. So you can change their speed. So you can tell it, I don't know, drive at 50 miles per hour. Click on the first one. And all I have to do is add a waypoint. And I just, I know exactly where to bring him. He's going to go to this right. other town and there's a dead end right here. And I'll just click on it. Bam. Now mm -hmm. it has oh and it put it put the map right on the road. That is right. so sweet. And then it'll I, automatically track the road. That's why you whenever you're looking for those roads, you gotta make sure that it's going where you want it to go. Because uh, it's gonna it's gonna stick to that road. <laughs> you could tell it to go off road, but you'll have to create another waypoint and then specifically tell it the type for that waypoint is off road and then it'll get off the road. The top speed is thirty six knots. <laughs> yeah, it'll it'll usually tell you how fast they'll go. Okay, and that's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's so, so sweet. Those guys are set. <laughs> as far as this mission is concerned, their only goal is to get to where their destination is. So, so I don't need to create any triggers. Once the mission gets start started, they're just gonna go. They're just gonna start driving. Start driving. Yeah. So then, your <sighs> job as the player in that mission will be to actually find these guys, figure out which road they're on, which you can use your map and figure that out, and try and see if you can find them and intercept them. If and you and destroy that. Easier for yourself. Then you know you can add certain things in there, like a waypoint over where they're suspected to right, be right. at any given time. And destroy them and get your ass out before before they're uh, right. they're if they're make twenty twenty. Uh, 21 whatever comes after you mm -hmm. all right and then the thing to remember you did not change the behavior of these vehicles so the transport truck is just going to be a transport truck but those front and back vehicles by default they will if attack you come in and try to attack it will shoot, shoot back. back right which is what you want them to do they're defending the middle vehicle yeah so that's their only goal now, once they get to their destination, they'll stop and they'll just sit there. So if you happen to take too long, but you end up finding them after they've gotten to their destination, they'll be easy pickings, but they'll still shoot back. But you can also set a trigger. Okay, how, mm -hmm. would, you, how would you set a trigger that if the convoy gets to its destination unharmed, that's it, you, you failed? Ah, now you're thinking. Let's go back to the triggered actions window, the set rules for trigger from okay. the left uh, side of the screen. Set rules for trigger. Where's that again? There we go. Okay. All right. So we go new, uh -huh. name it whatever you want. Conditions. I'll call it mission failure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Conditions. Oh. New. This is, this is another one where you could use a zone, which obviously we have not yet put a zone down. Uh, so you I would get probably it. want to put the zone down first before doing that. But let's say for sake of argument, we that's just want to go with the default thing that says all of coalition in zone, which means once the entire convoy gets there. Obviously, it won't be the entire coalition because you also have this MIG, which is a part of the coalition that won't ever be in that zone. Right. But let's say for the sake of argument, we want everything in that zone. And then under actions, see, since it's alphabetized, end mission. Hang on a second here. All of coercion. Now, in this case, we don't want all of coercion in, in zone. We just want. Yeah, you can just put group in zone, all of group in zone. And then, of course, the group would be the. Uh, Oh, transport you, convoy that we just made. Right, and you, you named the group, so you'd put all of a uh, group in zone, and right. then you'd select uh, assign a group, uh, assign a zone. Right, and in the action, it would just be uh, display and message. mission. Dis and mission, yeah, you fucked up. Right, and <sighs> now you'll notice two other things with the end mission. It says winner, red or blue. In this case, you would set it to red because red will have won. You didn't right. get to them in time. Right. And then oh. you can set your text saying you failed. Right. Something like okay. that. So what'll, in theory, what will happen if they get to that target zone that you will have already set as their endpoint, 
you'll get a message that says you failed and then the mission will completely stop. It'll go to the, you know, the after mission screen where it right. tallies up how many kills you had. Right. That's what it'll do automatically. Right. Okay. That's yeah, good. That would be a mission failure thing. So as soon as you get that, you'll probably be cussing up a storm at the screen and <laughs> you'll want to refly the whole thing. Well, here's the thing. I mean, what if you create a fun mission, you don't want it to be too easy. Right. You understand? So and especially if you're gonna share the mission with somebody else, you know, mm-hmm. they have no idea what you put in there. It could right. be it could be a quote unquote milk run. Or it, it could be a lost cause. The way you set up the mission, you're gonna die no matter what. Yeah. And now there's another thing that you could do. Like say in a case like this where time is of the essence, you could set instead of having just one waypoint for that transport convoy Uh you could set up specific waypoints along the way make each waypoint also a trigger zone so you like you build your little trigger zones Uh whenever the vehicle passes let's say trigger zone a Uh a message pop up for you you know target vehicles are halfway to their destination all right get your ass in gear yeah Got and it. You could add like a second one that says, hey, target vehicles are like one minute away from their destination. Are you going to shoot them or what? <laughs> you know, something right, like right, that. Right, right, right. And then that way the player is at a point where, okay, they realize, yeah, time is of the essence. I got to do something. Otherwise, I'm going to fail. Right. So then when the failure mission comes up, it's not like a complete surprise. Like, right. hey, we, we tried to tell you. You had all this time to kill them. You didn't. <laughs> Got it, got it, got it, That's got it. That's just some of the little fun things that you can do. And I've actually done that before on some of these uh, missions that I've shown off on YouTube. I think there was one that I did where I was flying a MiG-29. Uh-huh. And I had to take out a Marine Corps convoy in a matter of time. Because if they would have gotten to the airport, they basically would have destroyed all of the defenses that we had. So that's exactly what I did. I had like their path along the road and i created trigger zones along the way so that we knew okay three minutes until they reach the destination two minutes so on and so forth so it gives a heightened sense of awareness you realize not only do you have to get past all these enemy aircraft that want to kill you but you also have to stop these marines from getting to the airport right okay and it worked out perfectly okay okay yeah there's there's many many different ways you can do it this is just a, a small sampling of all the creative things you can come up with. Whatever you can dream, pretty much you can do it in DCS with limitations, of course. Well, what I'm th- what, what I think I'm going to do is start watching I have the Star uh, Trek Next Generation on DVD. I'm just mm-hmm. going to start watching them and uh, get mission ideas from those episodes. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Inspiration can come from anywhere. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's cool. We covered all of this. This is a lot easier than I thought it would be. Yeah, and it's one of those things where the more you do it, the more you uh, iron out the kinks, the more you retain the information. So when it comes time to do the next mission, it's a hell of a lot easier. Well, uh, uh, the one that I did that you fixed up for me, I flew it yesterday. Uh, once. How well did it work? Oh, it worked. It worked perfectly. Once, well, what happened was um, I fired off two Mavericks and dropped my bombs. Uh, I think I hit the targets. Uh, once I gave the instructions to the wingman, you know, to engage, they fired off all their ma- their Mavericks. Everything got destroyed. Yep. I, and I did a flyby. Yep. Everything was bad. But what happened was I I got, uh, and it took me a, a while to figure out, toggling one turns on and turns off your navigation mode. Right. And then control tilde cycles through your waypoint. So it took me a while to figure mm-hmm. out which one is my waypoint to go back home, which is really waypoint one, because that's right. where you took off from. So by the time yeah. I figured that out, they were halfway home, and I'm still, you know, north of the mountains. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, yeah, so... Yeah, you, you did have some pretty long legs on that mission. I can tell you that when I flew it, it took me... It, like, it, it took a while. To about 30 minutes to get there. <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, it's my that's fine. If that's what you're looking for, but yeah, it also helps to have an idea of what the area is like. Exactly, and the distance. I I did not use a ruler. There's a ruler in the mission editor. I did not yep. use it to measure how far the airport was from the, the target area, and that would have told me how long I'd have been sitting there. Right. But um, um, we all I I gave the instruction to the flight RTB. They were they returned to base. The first one landed fine. For some reason, the third one. He didn't land until after I landed, and I was, you know, at least 15, 20 minutes behind them. 
Yeah, sometimes they are kind of weird like that. I've seen wingmen try to land at the same time. I've seen where if one wingman is on the runway, but they're like a halfway down the runway, the other wingman won't land. He'll just continue circling. He'll go around. Or I've seen them wait until you land before they actually make their attempt to land. Just being polite. But anyhow, usually if you give them the command to RTB, Uh when you're on final, they'll line up in order and land in order. Oh, okay. Anyhow, I, uh, I, I, you know, there's that big mountain just, is it, hang on, is it north? Yeah, just northwest of uh, Vegas is a big mountain. It's about a 15-foot peak. And I was burning up my gas. So once I got above that, I cut my power and I essentially glided down to where Vegas was. And I set the I set the flight path in such a way that I was coming straight in. But ATC gave me runway 21, not runway 3. So I had to fly around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it will always, always do that. That's one of the weird things about DCS. Unless you specifically set wind faster than, like, what is it, 5 knots, 6 uh-huh. knots? Yeah. Yeah. If you set it in a certain direction and then tell the wind, you know, you're higher than the default speed or whatever, uh-huh. then it'll actually tell you to land on a proper runway. Otherwise, it'll always do that. It'll send you out on one runway and then you'll have to come in come on, in on the other one. But, yep. And the, the landing is on my, uh, my, uh, my Facebook uh, page. Okay. I'll probably watch it in a few when I'm eating my Chinese. So, yeah. So. <laughs> But anyhow, thank you very much, sir. I don't want to take up too much of your time. But with a problem. with the information you've given me, I can put together a nice suite of uh, single, not a campaign per se, but individual missions that would be fun to fly. Yeah, do the individual missions. And then if you want to, you can make a story for it. Because remember, there's still all of that stuff like the briefing and everything else that you can add to it. Uh huh. Um, once you have a mission or a couple of missions created, just send them to me. I'll load them in there and I'll make sure that everything looks right as far as the triggers and everything yeah cool thanks man appreciate it no problem anytime enjoy the chinese food i hope to have the uh elizabeth is in dayton so i'm gonna go see her tomorrow after work so i probably won't be able to post my flight okay. until maybe like friday or so but i have plenty to nah, work with fine. now so <laughs> all so, right well have fun with that i have to remember to stop the recording all right man we'll keep in touch thanks okay dokie sir all right bye Help.